a series. The A series is the chip family that transformed the iPhone from a gadget into a pocket computer. When Apple launched the first A4 in 2010, it was more than just a processor. It was Apple cutting ties with the rest of the tech world. Before that, iPhones relied on Samsung chips. But with the A series, Apple started designing its own silicon, optimized down to the transistor for iOS. Each generation, from A6 to A17 Pro, pushed mobile computing forward, faster CPUs, better graphics, and neural engines that made phones capable of real-time image recognition and console-grade gaming. What makes the A-Series iconic isn't just speed, it's Apple's obsession with control, designing hardware and software as one organism. The A-Series became the foundation for everything else. iPads, Apple TVs, and later, Macs. Every photo processed, every face ID scan, every cinematic shot, all flowed through this custom brain. The iPhone may have redefined smartphones, but the A-Series is what made them feel alive. A-Series the S series is the tiny engine that keeps the Apple Watch ticking, literally. When Apple first revealed the watch in 2015, it wasn't just about fashion or notifications on your wrist. To make something that small run apps, track your heartbeat, and still last all day, Apple had to rethink what a computer could be. The answer was the S series, a system and package, or SIP, that squeezed CPU, GPU, storage, sensors, and wireless radios onto a single postage stamp sized board. Each generation quietly evolved from the S1 to the lightning fast S9, where on-device Siri and gesture control now run directly from the chip's neural engine. The brilliance of the S-Series isn't brute force, it's balance. It's how Apple engineered a processor to sit power, stay cool, and never skip a beat while strapped to your wrist. While the A-Series made iPhones powerful, the S-Series made computing personal, intimate even. It turned technology into something that didn't just sit in your pocket, but lived with you, tracking your sleep, your heart, your motion. It's not a chip that screams for attention. It just quietly keeps time, in and your health, in sync. T-Series The T-Series is Apple's silent guardian, the chip that protects everything you can't afford to lose. When the T1 appeared inside the 2016 MacBook Pro, most people barely noticed. But hidden behind that touch bar and fingerprint sensor was a new philosophy, privacy by design, enforced by silicon. A year later came the T2, and that's when it became clear. Apple wasn't just building faster computers, it was building safer ones. The T2 handled things the main CPU couldn't be trusted with. Encryption keys, touch ID data, secure boot. It controlled the microphone and camera, ensuring they stayed off when not in use. If your Mac ever felt locked down, that was the T-Series doing its job. What set it apart was its independence. Even if Mac OS failed, the T2 stood guard, isolating sensitive data from the rest of the system. It blurred the line between chip and security system, making the computer itself part of your defense. While most Apple chips make headlines for performance, the T-Series earned its legacy quietly, not by making your Mac faster, but by making it trustworthy. Embase the M-Base series, better known as just the M1 and M2 chips, marked the moment Apple stopped depending on Intel and started running its own race. When the M1 launched in 2020, it didn't just surprise people, it humiliated decades of assumptions about laptop power. The chip ran cooler, faster, and longer on battery than most desktop processors. That was the payoff of Apple's years perfecting the A-Series for iPhones, taking the same efficiency, scaling it up, and dropping it into a Mac. Inside was a unified memory design, where CPU, G GPU and Neural Engine all shared the same pool of data. No waiting, no wasted energy, just seamless performance. The M1 turned the humble MacBook Air into a fanless powerhouse and the Mac Mini into a silent beast. Then came the M2, sleeker, stronger, and even more energy tight. But the real story wasn't just performance, it was independence. The m base series freed Apple from the slow pace of outside chip makers. It became a symbol of control. Apple Silicon, Apple Rules, Apple Results. M Pro. The M Pro series is where Apple's silicon stopped being just efficient and started being aggressive. These chips were built for people who don't just browse or edit. They build, render, and compute all day long. When the M1 Pro debuted, it looked like Apple had stuffed a workstation into a laptop chassis. Up to 10 CPU cores, 16 GPU cores, and a memory bandwidth that blew past anything Intel could match. All while sipping power like it was green tea. Video editors could stack 8K timelines in Final Cut Pro without stuff 
stutter. Developers could compile massive code bases faster than their desktop rigs. Even the fans rarely spun up because the Pro wasn't just powerful, it was balanced. Apple's focus here was simple. Eliminate the trade-off between portability and muscle. The MacBook Pro stopped being a Pro in name only. It became a portable studio, capable of real-time 3D rendering, AI workflows, and multi-stream editing on the go. The M Pro series redefined what a laptop chip could be, turning raw silicon into a creative weapon. M Max the M Max series was Apple flexing, showing the world that its chips could scale beyond anything ever crammed into a laptop. The M1 Max wasn't about balance or restraint. It was about brute force, unleashed with surgical precision. This chip doubled down on the M1 Pro's architecture, twice the GPU cores, twice the memory bandwidth, and support for up to 64 gigabytes of unified memory. That meant 8K ProRes video editing, real-time effects, and complex simulations, all happening without touching a desktop tower. For video professionals, it changed the rules. A single M1 Max MacBook could replace entire editing bays. You could plug in multiple displays, scrub through terabytes of footage, and never hit thermal throttling. The M2 Max pushed it further. Bigger transistors, smarter performance cores, and power efficiency that still embarrass chips twice its size. In short, the M Max series proved that Apple Silicon wasn't just efficient or elegant, it was dominant. It blurred the line between mobile and workstation, showing that the future of heavy computing might just fit in a backpack. M Ultra. The M Ultra series is where Apple stopped pretending to play fair. Instead of building a bigger chip, Apple fused two M Max chips together using its Ultra Fusion architecture. Over 10,000 tiny connections linking them so tightly, they behaved like one monstrous processor. The result was the M1 Ultra, 20 CPU cores, 64 GPU cores, and memory speeds that made even desktop workstations blush. No external GPU, no add-on cards, just one slab of silicon quietly outperforming machines twice its power draw. It was Apple's declaration that scaling up didn't have to mean burning more energy. When the Mac Studio launched with the M1 Ultra, it shocked professionals. Film editors could process multiple 8K streams at once, 3D artists rendered massive scenes without a single fan roar, and data scientists? They got supercomputer level speed under a desk. Then came the M2 Ultra, doubling everything again. Two chips, one mine. This was Apple Silicon at its peak. A final statement that the age of modular CPUs was fading, and the era of unified, efficient compute had begun. Bar series. While most Apple chips power devices you can touch, phones, Macs, or watches, the R1 lives behind the scenes, inside the Apple Vision Pro. It's not built for speed or graphics, but for perception. This tiny processor connects to a web of 12 cameras, 5 sensors, and 6 microphones, capturing everything your head and eyes are doing in real time. Every tilt, blink, and movement is processed through the R1 before the image even reaches your eyes, all in about 12 milliseconds. That's its entire purpose, to erase delay between you and the digital world. While the M2 chip inside Vision Pro runs the apps and renders visuals, the R1 ensures what you see feels instant and perfectly anchored to reality. You move your head, the world moves with you. In Apple's lineup, the R series marks the first processor designed for spatial computing, where hardware doesn't just run code, but senses your world. Small, silent, and unseen, it's the invisible bridge between your eyes and the digital universe. Done watching? If you like this video, hit subscribe for more cool stuff.